Ignite to impact. Do you have a vision of your ideal life? Or are you a leader who is not real sure how to lead your team? Are you uncertain about your future and perhaps need a vision? Well, my guests can answer those questions and more. Hi, welcome to Ignite to Impact, where influencers hang out and share their stories of success and struggle and let us know how they make a difference in the world. I'm Dr. Geneva, your Vibrant Life Architect, and today I am so delighted because Sean Fair is with me. He's a corporate leadership, consultant, sales, and vision expert, all of that good stuff. And he really does define leadership in a variety of ways, and that's one of the reasons I'm looking forward to this conversation. And Sean has the reputation of... Uh, a a real unique ability to bring uh, folk from all different levels of an organization, of a corporation together, and help them understand that team performance is really based upon the leader's ability to lead. And so join me in this conversation. It's going to be great. He's had over 20 years of experience Uh, coaching, speaking, uh, and what's always most important, real life. Sean, how are you? I'm doing fine, Dr. Geneva. How are you? I am terrific. I am so glad um, that you're with us and will share your marvelous expertise and experience that you have. And so let's get into it. You know, since we're talking about leadership, Mm -hmm. You know, what is a leader? Well, a leader is one that that serves people. And um, a leader demonstrates certain attributes. You know, one one attribute is is called lead by example. Mm -hmm. And and typically when I when I talk about leadership, I talk about leaders in in the corporate in the corporate sense. Mm -hmm. And so lead by example doesn't necessarily mean that um, I wouldn't ask you to do things that that I wouldn't do. It doesn't necessarily mean that. But what it does mean is that I do and I know and I understand my job as a leader and I do it at 150% Okay. as it pertains to the employees. Mm -hmm. Because the employees can care less about the functionality of your job. They only care about the things that you do that directly interacts and and affects them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So lead by example, doing your job at 150% um, being the reflection that they need to see mm-hmm. is the most important thing about being a leader. Mm-hmm. So that's what you mean when you say lead by example. You're really talking about the ability of leaders to be role models. Absolutely. And, um, you know, kind of pave the way, show the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how did you, so, you know, people have so many different perspectives on leadership. How'd you come to this perspective that you have? You know, over the years, I've worked with a lot of good leaders and a lot, and I work with a lot of bad leaders. And I really just kind of I've took mental notes on what the good leaders do day in and day out. Okay. And again, it goes back to demonstrating the right qualities and the right attributes. Um, and through that, you, you start to gain a certain level of respect, but not only just respect you actually start to like the person that you work for. Mm -hmm. And so one of the main questions that I always ask managers, is it important for your people to like you? Okay. And and I get a lot of mixed answers. People say, well, you know, they they should respect you. And I say, no, they should like you because if I have to go to work for someone that I antagonize or I don't like every single day, Mm -hmm. that's a hostile environment. Mm -hmm. And, And so, yeah, does respect play a role in it? Absolutely. Uh, but what I found is that leaders really, truly don't understand what mutual respect is between themselves and okay. the employee. And, okay. and, and how I, I kind of break that down is this, mm-hmm. is that when a new person comes in, in the organization, 
Uh, the manager has the responsibility to break down their rules and regulations, their policies and their procedures, the expectations. There should be a 30, 60, 90 day game plan. They send them through an onboarding training that's one week, two weeks, or three weeks long. And if you're a good manager, you know that they're not going to know all that they need to know during that period of time. Mm -hmm. You create a secondary training agenda, right, to cover all the things that they didn't get in training. You partner them up with someone who's been with the company for you know, two years, three years, or four years just to get them totally up to speed so they're confident and competent to do the job. And if a manager has done that, they have shown the new hire proper respect. Okay. But if they haven't done that, then um, quite naturally, if you're not getting the respect back, I always say, did you do your job? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. did you respect them? Okay. So, so manager, leader, is there a difference between the two? No, there, there's no difference. Um, I mean, they, they, obviously the manager has tasks that they have to do. Um, but they also have to to lead people, which includes holding folks accountable. Mm -hmm. um, and the manager has to do that. And, and sometimes the one thing that's lacking in organizations, and I don't see managers do a lot of, is holding their people accountable. Um, because um, some managers deem that to be a negative thing, and, and obviously some people, their employees, they deem that to, that to be a negative thing. But accountability is nothing more than a growth tool. But if I'm a manager and I demonstrate the right attributes, when I hold you accountable as the employee, you know exactly what my intent is. And that is to, to, to make you better, to help you to become the best team member that you can possibly be. But leadership goes way beyond the manager. Okay. Every employee in the organization should be developed to become a leader. Mm -hmm. And all it is is that when you are a leader and you're a team member, it means that you take ownership of your position. Okay. That means that you care about your job, you expand your capacity in your job, there's always continued growth, and, and as a team member, the team member should know their job better than the manager does their job. Okay, and so, you know, uh, it's interesting that you would, uh, you, you talk about um, the manager and then the leader and then the responsibility of the manager to develop all to become leaders. And one of the things that I know, well, I believe, mm -hmm. <laughs> distinguishes leaders uh, is their ability to not only have a vision, but to be able to communicate a vision, be able to talk about it, be able to rap about it, and, and people understand that. How do uh, managers uh, get a vision? Well, the, the company has to have a vision first. Okay. okay. Be because if the company doesn't have a vision and then managers are trying to create their own vision mm -hmm. and not knowing exactly where the company is trying to go, um, disaster is, is bound to happen. Okay. And, and so every manager and every employee should know the value that their organization brings to society. Um, it is the very reason why I'm inspired to get up and come to work. And so I, I define the vision as a realistic and an attainable and attractive snapshot of the company's future. And every employee that reads the vision should see themselves in the vision, mm. right? There's gotta be something that I'm uh, attracted to. So um, there, there's a, a, a dry cleaning company, I won't, I won't name the dry cleaning mm -hmm. company's mm -hmm. name. Um, they're trying to figure out how do they get their, their pressers to, to spend more time to be more meticulous about pressing the clothes, you know, because okay. they're delivering a bad, a bad product. Okay. Double pleated pants, mm -hmm. broken buttons, okay. you know, missing buttons. Mm -hmm. It's a bad product. And so the, the CEO was asking me a very simple question. What can we do? And my mm -hmm. question to him is, is what value do they bring to society? Mm -hmm. He says, Sean, I don't know what you're talking about. Can you give me an example? And mm -hmm. I said, sure. When, when this person over here, this presser, when they press this suit, did they know it was going to the son who was getting ready to attend their father's funeral? Mm -hmm. or, or when this presser pressed this dress, did, they, did she know it was going to the college student that just graduated going to her very first interview? Mm -hmm. Or when this person pressed this suit, did they know it was going to the newscaster who was going to the music theater to receive their Emmy Award? Like, Do they understand the value mm -hmm. that they bring to society? Because those suits, those clothes for those people, for those moments were a, a comforter and a confidence builder for them. So now, um, when they press those clothes, they should be thinking this, who is it going to mm -hmm. and for what reason? Mm -hmm. And they start to have that mindset 
and understand the actual vision of the company and the value it brings to society, there will be more focus and more engagement at work. Mm-hmm. And so, so that's, that's fascinating. So every person working, and of course you're talking about uh, you know, working in a corporate setting or business setting you know, by your examples that you're giving. So every employee, <laughs> every right. person working uh, in an organization, in a corporate setting, a business, needs to understand or needs to know um, what's happening with the product or service they're creating or they're touching or they're making come alive. They right. need to understand, you said, the value of that. Okay, so how does a leader or a manager, and I know we're, we seem to be using those words interchangeably, but I'm going to come back to that one in a minute. Right. But, but how does a leader manager um, help or get an employee to know and understand value? Let's say the, the company has a vision statement. Let's say it's plastered on the wall. Um, is there more to it than just being plastered on the wall? And how does a leader make a vision become alive? Well, it, well, first, it goes back to the definition of vision. Okay. When I say credible, realistic, and attainable, um, the next word is attractive. So in other words, there's got to be something in it that the employee says, I'm attracted to this. So let me, let me just give you an example of a snippet of uh, a company's vision statement. Okay. So this Great. one company says, um, our, we pride ourselves in developing innovative people. We do this by allowing them to spend quality time with their family members so that when they come to work, their primary focus is on work. This creates a great end user experience. Now the question becomes, see a great vision is backed up by policy. How many days does those employees get off per year is the question. Mm -hmm. Now for this particular company, they get 90 days off per year. Mm -hmm. See, when, a, when a, a, an employee reads a vision and they see themselves in it, okay. right, and they okay. believe, and there is something in it that's attractive for mm -hmm. them, okay. that's how you encourage the engagement and the focus at work. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, so let, let's, can we review those, I think there were three components you had. I know attractive, mm -hmm. realistic, what was this? It's attainable. And attainable. Okay, so, you know, there are those who say that a vision is always something that's beautiful, that's out there, uh, and really what not necessarily can be attained, but that's that hope, that's, that's that dream. What do you mean when you say attainable? Well, I, I think a vision is, I think it is attainable. Okay. It's just, but when you attain it, there should be another vision oh. that's put out there. All right, so it never it, stops. It, it just never, keeps rolling. It huh? never stops. And, and I tell companies this all the time is that when you get to the point where you stop growing, yes, then you are getting into a very challenging um, environment because okay. once you plateau, okay. th there's only one way to go, mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's down. And you may be able to maintain for three years, four years, or five years, but sooner or later, Right, that curve starts to, to, to trend downwards. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so there should always be a vision after you attain one vision, you should be going to the next vision. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay, so that vision keeps rolling on because you keep dreaming, you keep wanting to be better. So you're positioning vision as a, as a, you know, a necessary ingredient, that vehicle to growth. Absolutely. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. Okay. If you're just joining us, I am having and inspiring, uh, eye-opening conversation with Sean Fair, who's a corporate leadership sales and vision expert. And he's been all around the country uh, talking about leadership, helping corporations, employers, and employees learn what vision is all about. And as you know, Ignite to Impact is sponsored by Dr. Geneva Speaks. And I want you to make sure that you check out soon coming 
our Vibrant Life Blueprint. And it's exciting and it really relates to this conversation we ha- we're having because one of the things we talk about when we talk about Vibrant Life is having a vision. And Sean, you know, um, one of the things that um, I'm, I'm really intrigued about is your ability to take this whole concept about vision and really break it down to what a leader or manager has to do. Let me ask you, do you believe that an individual in his or her everyday life needs a vision? Well, absolutely. Um, you gotta have a plan, right? And um, but what we find is that most people um, they don't. They do not have. I call it a growth plan. Okay. So you can call it a vision, but every every individual should have a growth plan. Uh, you know, when we were in school, you know, if you go back to preschool, you go back to grade school, high school, college, we we had a curriculum, right? Mm-hmm. The teachers gave us a curriculum, mm-hmm. but after we graduated school or we stopped school, there was no curriculum. We, we have to develop our own mm-hmm. curriculum for growth, mm-hmm. and and I can say this is that the person that we listen to the most. Mm-hmm. And the person that we talk to the most is ourselves. But, but if we're not growing and mm-hmm. we're the person that we listen to the most, we're going to end up making a whole bunch of bad decisions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and so mm-hmm. there should be a personal growth sp- uh, plan to, exp- to constantly expand your capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, learning never stops and, and leadership is for everyone. Because if you're, if you're a husband, you, you have to be a leader in the household. If you're a wife, you have to be a leader in the household. If, if you're a child, you're going to school, you should be a leader within the school and environment. And I, I believe everyone should have leadership qualities and abilities. And leadership, the definition of leadership is simply this. It is your ability to influence others. That's what leadership is all about. And I tell managers this all the time, is that you cannot be a great manager if you cannot influence your people and you cannot influence your bosses. You have to be able to do both. There are certain authorities that you do not have that has to come from the people that's above you, and you have to have influence there. That's what leadership is all about. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, you talking about, yeah, we were talking about employees, employers, the corporate setting, business, but you bringing in that really everyone has the opportunity to lead or will be leading in some way or another, a husband, a wife, a child. You know, but I've run into so many people uh, who don't see themselves as leader or that they have, uh, you know, that role or that role is for them. But you're defining leadership as influence. Influence, Say a little bit more about that. I want you to go a little, take that just a step deeper. What does that mean, that leadership is about influence? influence listen whatever you want to gain in life and and i'm I'm going to kind of tie this into to your vision okay you cannot achieve your vision by yourself Mm -hmm. it requires that you have people that help you along the way Mm -hmm. and if you no matter what you're trying to accomplish no matter what job you're trying to get no matter what company you're trying to open no, no matter what you're trying to get into you have to have the ability to persuade others to buy into what it is that you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. If you think that you can get to where you're trying to go by yourself, and, and, and obviously we all, we all need God, mm-hmm. um, it's going to be a very tough road trying to get there without the ability to influence. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's, that is the, that's the real key to it. Mm-hmm. You know. Everybody wants something. And this is what I find out about a lot of people. Most people want to change their circumstances, mm-hmm. but they don't want to change themselves. Mm-hmm. And, and this is a major, major challenge. So if I'm not expanding my leadership capacity, it's very difficult to change your circumstances, but the mere fact you don't have the ability to influence. Mm-hmm. And, and so all these things, they, they all tie in together. Mm-hmm. So how does somebody get the ability to influence? Are, do, are you born with it? Or is it something that's made and developed? I think it's, I think it's made and developed. I think some people are born with it, um, but it can be developed. And, and you, first of all, you have to look at your circle. 
you really have to take a look at who do you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. Do you surround yourself with leaders or do you surround yourself with followers? Mm -hmm. Right? Because mm -hmm. if you surround yourself with leaders, you'll start to learn from those people. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Listen, you're only as good as, as the circle mm -hmm. that you're in. Mm -hmm. And if you are the top person in your circle, mm -hmm. you probably need to yeah. change the circle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. And in, in this part of the conversation, we are really interchanging um, leader and influencer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're using them synonymously. Yeah. Right? Is, is, am I hearing that that's where your head is and how you that's, see? That's, ex that's exactly how I see it. Okay. And in both, in both worlds, mm -hmm. in, in the corporate world and, and even for you know, people that are at home, it's, it's influence. Mm -hmm. it, it, you need it in both in both areas of your life, mm -hmm. in business and both from a personal perspective. So, when did you discover influence and its importance? I mean, what was your aha moment about the importance of influence? You know, I I had a vision at a pretty much at a very young young age when I was maybe about eighteen. Okay, I knew exactly where I wanted to work. Oh, you did? I, and, and, and let me just say this, let me change this. I didn't know oh. where I wanted to work. Okay. I knew what building <laughs> I wanted to work in. Oh, you? it was down to the building? It was down, down to the to, building. Okay. It was on Northwestern Highway, okay. where the old Air Touch, Cellular One Verizon used to, used to exist. Okay. And it had the little glass, little slant glass windows. Okay. And I always said, that's the building that I wanna, I wanna work in. Okay. And so. And what, why was that? I just liked it. I just liked the look of oh, okay. it. It just, right. it just looked okay. professional, right? All right. So, so it's appearance yeah. influenced it's an, you. It's, 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 it's the appearance. <laughs> and one day, uh -huh. uh, I met someone who worked in that bu building, and, I, and I, I knew the person. I didn't know him that well, but I did know him. And I influenced him <laughs> to, to get me an interview in the job that he had. Uh -huh. and, and so um, without the influence... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to, to be where I am today. It all started there. Everything that I do now, it started way back then in that building, and it started with my ability to influence someone, right, to get me an interview, mm -hmm. even when there wasn't a position available. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Sean, you're such an expert in this area. And there are probably people who are listening who, you know, want to be influencers, right. want to learn more about influence. They don't know where to begin or even if they got it already. What's, what are the one or two uh, characteristics that influencers have? So without a doubt, you know in your mind, oh, there's an influencer. Well, I'm going to go back to where we where we started earlier in, yes. in this in this session. Is the first thing is lead by example. Okay, so they're role models. They're role so models. Influencers are role models. They're role models. Okay. The second thing is is mutual respect. Mm. I give you respect to get the respect back. Mm -hmm. Three, it's all about um, it's experience. It's being good at what it is that you're trying to do. Okay. In other words, when I go to work and I do my job. I do it at a very high level because everyone is doing what? Mm -hmm. They're watching. Mm -hmm. And when I do things at a high okay. level, okay. that influences people by my, by my action. Okay. Okay? Trustworthiness. Mm -hmm. People trust me. Okay. I do what I say that I'm going to do. And, and people have to be very careful about this. Sometimes we say that we're going to do certain things no matter how small or, or, or minute it is, and we don't get around to doing it. They're understanding of that. But when that happens on a continual basis, trust is being broken down. And you cannot influence people when they don't, don't trust, trust you. you. Yes. They don't trust you. Yes. So those are some of the attributes mm -hmm. that are necessary okay. to be a key influencer. Okay. So no like, and trust. We go back to that. And um, yeah. Yeah. And so, Sean, you're an influencer. And... Um, what do you see for your future? What are you doing next? The next thing, the, the thing that we talk about, you know, with, with my group and my team yeah. is, 
is doing a massive leadership event Ooh. in a stadium. Okay. okay. And our, okay, now I gotta stop you there. That, mm-hmm. I, I see that, that's what you call vision. Yeah. I That was the snapshot. Yeah. I got that, I got that picture. Now here's what I want you to do, Sean. Okay, mm-hmm. so I want you to take me there. So you've already planned the event, we're there. You've, you've got it, I'm sitting in, sitting in the audience waiting. What's happening? I'm on the stage. All right. And I'm in front of 20,000 people. Oh, 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 talk it. And while I'm talking, you can hear a pin drop in the room mm. because everyone is reflecting on every area of their life that they need to change. Mm. Ooh. Now, see, that's a vision. Yeah. See, 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 that's a vision. Now, see, you need to do that, take that all around the world. That, that's phenomenal. Yeah. And so then after you're on the stage, pin drop, everybody's thinking, everybody's deep in thought. What happens next? How do they actualize what they're thinking about in their head? What, what would you do next? I mean, what would you, where would you take us? The, the next step is to have a platform that people can go to and continue Right, that reflection process, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and that's something that we are we're working on right now as okay. we speak. Reflection, that's that's a key yeah. technique, isn't yeah. it? It's a key technique. When I when I work with managers or individuals, I don't tell people this is what you're doing wrong mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Be- because that doesn't really work. Mm-hmm. Because if you think this mm-hmm. and I think this, all you get is this. Mm-hmm. What I do is. If I, if I realize that there's a problem, I say, here's the realization I need this person to come to. Mm-hmm. Here are all the questions that I have to ask to get them to come to that realization on their own. Mm-hmm. That's what reflection is, and that's what encourages the change. Mm. Mm. So that vision, the reflection, the actualization, change. Right. You know, phenomenal. Um, this has been just an amazing conversation. Um, is what, what would you like to leave on the table? Well, we have a big event. Okay. okay that's coming up <laughs> um, June, June 19th okay. um, at the Novi Imagine Theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have 300 seats, and okay. um, I'll be there along with Keon Clinton and um, Malcolm Hendricks and Christy Cannelberry, Joy D. Calloway, is going to be on the stage with us, and we're going to be talking about leadership and the um, the psychology of leadership. It's going to be a great event. So on June nineteenth, stay tuned. Um, we're going to be rolling this out on social media and radio and, uh, and all the other kind of um, of um, media outlets. Oh, wonderful. Absolutely. And you know, so when you when folk are listening to this podcast in twenty twenty. And uh, the June 19th date has gone by because, you know, this podcast lives forever. Right. What I want them to, they they will be buying tickets to the 20,000 people in the stadium event. Right. Right? Right. In 2020. And they'll be hearing all about Sean Fair and his view on leadership and helping to actualize people's dreams and vision that's you know that's an incredible legacy it's a wonderful legacy do you think about it from that perspective the the legacy the teaching that that you're helping people i I do i do yeah that's that's wonderful and twenty thousand people and and i assume that will grow and grow and grow that's that is that's what's going to happen that's the that's the vision right that's absolutely (laughs) sean fair it has just been a delight to have this conversation with you and to hear um, not only about vision, but your your down real talk about influence, um, the conversation about what good leaders do and how we can spot influencers. All of those are great takeaways and mm-hmm. it's been my pleasure and promise me you'll come back 
right before that big 20,000 person event. And we can talk again. I, I promise you. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate that. This is Dr. Geneva, and we've just had a phenomenal conversation. I know you've learned and been inspired and just so much, so much here. And that's what happens on Ignite to Impact. Join me uh, the next time, and don't forget to check out the Vibrant Life Blueprint. Ignite to impact.